viewers, and welcome to class. My name is Ifeoli Wadideji, and I'm your economics tutor. Now, today we'll be taking and solving some questions that are frequently asked in the UTME, POSITME, WAEC, and the MNECO. And it'll be useful for as many as um, review this. So let's start now. Question number one. Economics is the study, is the study of human behavior as it relates to the dash. A, effective allocation of resources. B, production of goods. C, operation of companies. D, generation of income. The answer is effective allocation of resources. Economics deals with how scarce resources are effectively utilized in a way that you derive maximum satisfaction from it and minimize wastage. So the answer is option A, effective allocation of resources. Question number two. The downturn in the prices of shares on stock markets is, an, is a highlight of a dash. The downturn, the downturn in the prices of shares on stock exchange markets is a lot of dash. A, effective allocation of resources, the invisible hand, regulatory nature of the market, consumer chance, the answer is the invisible hand. It is called the hand of nature that controls and regulates the prices of, of stock in the stock of shares, security, gilt edge, bonds, and the likes in the stock exchange market. So the answer is B, the invisible hand. Question number three. Standard deviation of a set of data is a dash. Standard deviation of a set of data is a dash. A, always measured from the mode, the most representative of average, always measured from the median, a measure of dispersion. The answer is D. And it is D because part of the tools that are used in economic analysis, we have measures, we have tables, we have graph, we have charts, we have pictogram, we have histogram. We have what we call measures of central tendencies and we have measures of dispersion. So now, part of measure of dispersion is just talking about how, how a set of number deviates from the, from the central. So, and we have, under the measure of dispersion, we have standard deviation, we have range, we have variance, we have uh, quartiles, percentiles, and the like. So, the answer is D, measures of dispersion. Question number four. If a consumer plans to spend 120 kobo on four oranges, but spends 80 kobo, his consumer surplus is dash. Now, the anticipated expenditure is 120 kobo. The actual expenditure is 80 kobo. Now, this, this, this topic is under consumer surplus or natural consumer behavior. Now, to know the surplus, it will be 120 kobo minus 80 kobo, which is 40 kobo. That is the surplus. That is the consumer surplus. And it, if what to show it in the graph, it is shown this way. Now, this is called the budget line. Now, now if so, if you mark here, this will be our 40, this will be the 80. So this is the actual expenditure, and this is the surplus. Question number five. In price competition, price is determined by the dash. A, government, B, sellers, C, buyers, D, market. Now, there are two types of market structure. We have market according to goods sold. We have market according to price. Market according to goods sold, we have what we call the raw materials market, the consumer goods market, the producer goods market. We have the labor market. We have the money market. We have the capital market on the financial market and so on. Now, market according to price. We have perfect competition and the in perfect competition. Now, our question is, is based on perfect competition. Now, in perfect competition, it is a market where there is free entry and free exit. It's a market where there are many buyers and many sellers. It's a market where uh, the buyer or the seller cannot invest price. Now, so the answer for that one is D market. And the answer is D. And market is a platform or an institution in which the buyer and seller is brought into close contact. Into close contact. So if you're looking at market, you are dealing with you are dealing with demand and supply under under market. So the answer is market. Question number six. 
the ultimate aim, the ultimate aim of agricultural policy in Nigeria is to achieve a food sufficiency, b industrialization, c full employment, d industrial capacity utilization. The answer is food sufficiency. So agri is basically concerned with um, rearing of animals, planting of crops for human use. So it is, it is answer is a question number seven. The primary motives motive for an individual engaging in production is to the primary motive for an individual engaging in production is to a make profit b satisfy basic human want c distribute wealth then d put input into use that's why it's b satisfy basic human want no production is not complete until the goods get to the final consumer are you, are you following me now and production, has, production has, always been, has also been defined as the creation of utility. And utility means satisfaction derived from the consumption of units of product. So that, that, that's why option B is the answer. Question number eight. The choice of the method of production in an economy is determined by the dash. A. Level of technical know-how. B. Rate of population growth. C. Availability of natural resources. Then D. Level of income. The answer is A. Level of technical know-how. It doesn't matter methodology. And that is and that is well dealt with. We are dealing with basic economic problems, which we have what to produce, we have for whom to produce, we have how to produce, we have efficiency of resources used. Now, when dealing with how to produce, how to produce it with the methodology or method of production and there are two methods we have what we call the labor intensive and the capital intensive labor intensive this with the use of manpower capital this with the use of machines so now for you to pick either of these things you have to look at the most available resources and you have to look at the level of your experience and now you can make use of the available resources so that, so that is why Option A is that which is the level of technical know-how. Question number nine. A major disadvantage of the arithmetic mean, a major disadvantage of the arithmetic mean is that it is A, not useful for large data, B, not suitable for further statistical analysis, C, cumbersome to determine the actual value, then D, affected by extreme values. The answer is D, it is affected by extreme values. It is useful for Large data because you know arithmetic mean can be in two forms. Arithmetic mean can be in two forms. All we call the grouped, and we have the ungrouped. Formula for this one is summation f x over summation f. Why for this one summation x all over n? So it can be used for number uh, number a. Why b? It is used for further. Statistical analysis because the value that you have in your mean is all you used to get your standard deviation and your variance. And the same thing, it is not cumbersome. So the answer is D. It's affected by extreme values. Question 10. The median of an odd number, odd number set of scores, is the middle value in the set, highest value in the set, arithmetic means of the set, most frequently occurring score. The answer is A. Middle value in the set. Now, let me, let, let me start. An advice. Anytime you are going to, to calculate the median, median is, is arrived at after arranging in ascending or descending order. What do I mean by ascending? Ascending is where you are going from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. That's ascending. Descending is where you are going from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on. So, this is so you have to rearrange. Now, what about the, the, the last force in the middle now gives you your median? Now, the thing about all the number, you know, number, number like um, three, five. So, after you arrange them, the one that falls in the middle is your median. So, the answer is A. A. Number 11. A set of economic proportions about what is rather than what, what ought to be belongs to A. Economic policy, B. Normative economies, C. Positive economies. D. Informative economies. E. Political economies. The answer is positive economies. Now, in the classification of economies, 
We are what we call the positive economies. We are what we call the normative economies. It's on this way. What is? It's on this way. What should be? Now, you can be, you can be asked a question on positive or normative again. Now, positive also observe the cause and nature of a problem without providing solution because you can ask another question on it now this one look at the cause and nature of another, a problem without providing solution another thing about positive is that it, it does not give a value judgment it does not give a value judgment why normative it provides solution look at the cause look at the effect and provide solution and also it makes more judgment eg an example of positive statement is when i say um, there is high unemployment in nigeria that's the positive that, that's what's happening but now normative talking about providing solution so, something like saying something like saying um social scheme contribution can be used to curb poverty in nigeria that's talking about normative already providing solution to it but this one is talking about just looking at what is happening around us. So the answer for this one is positive economics, which is option C. Then question number 12. The definition of economics as a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means it was given by everybody should know that. Laune Robbins. Laune Robbins, option C. Question 13. Which of the following is not an assumption of the marginal utility theory? We have consumer rationality. Constant marginal utility of money, diminishing marginal utility, utility is measurable, utility, utility is qualitative. Utility is qualitative. Now, the answer is B. Constant marginal utility of money. Now, all the rest are under it. And this marginal utility theory falls under what we call the cardinal school of thought, under the theory of consumer. So the answer is B. Which of the following is the consumer goods? Now, we have insurance, jewelry, health. Education, travel. The answer is jewelry. Now, consumer goods are goods that are used up. Why? Producer goods are goods that are used for further production. So, jewelry is thing that you can wear anytime you need to just wear it. Jewelry cannot be used to make something else. It has been made already either into necklaces or into rings or into anything. So, it has been made already just to be consumed by the consumer. So, the answer is jewelry. Question 15. The price paid for labor services. It's called the price paid for labor services is called commission rate, profit, rent, interest. So, so the answer is salaries and wages. I believe we know that we have what we call the factors of production. We have the factor of production. You know, we have land with the reward of rent. We have labor, which is human. Productive effort with a lot of salaries or wages. We have capital, which is man made wealth used for further wealth. The reward of capital is interest. And we have the entrepreneur, who is the person that quite, and the reward is profits. What is profit? So now, so the answer about labor, which is uh, wages and salary. Question 16. The cost per unit of output at any given period is the average variable cost, average fixed cost, average total cost, marginal cost, staff cost. The, the answer is average total cost. That's under theory of cost, and uh, that's under the concept of short run cost analysis. So the answer is average total cost. And the formula and the formula for average total cost is total cost all over output. So we are talking about the cost per unit of output at the given So we are looking at all the output and we are looking at the cost. So the answer is average total cost which is option C. Option 17. If an increase in production input of a firm causes output to increase in a greater proportion, the variable is said to be experiencing, the firm is said to be experiencing increasing returns, decreasing, decreasing returns, constant returns, increasing not to scale, decreasing returns to scale. The answer is 
increasing return to scale. That's under what we call the law of variable proportion. So it's talking about when you increase your input and your output is greater than your input. Then take for example, if you just employ, uh, let's say, why take for example, if you have just five workers and before they, they do make 50 tons, 50 tons of cement, and you now employ just additional just one more, and they're now making something like 80 tons, 100 tons. Now, when the output is greater than the little input, it's called increasing returns to scale. That option is option D, number 18. The goal of a firm of an economic agent is to A, maximize utility, maximize cost, minimize profit, minimize revenue, maximize profit. So, the answer is E, maximize profit. Now, there are three economic agents. There are three economic agents. We have the household or individual. We have the firm or business organization. And we have the government. Now, this man is after making, is after satisfying utility. This one, profit. This one, allocation. of resources so that is what that is what each one of them is concerned with so the answer is e question number 19 the demand for cash balances in order to take advantages of a likely fall in the stock prices is referred to as transactional motive precautionary motive speculative motive scarcity motive exception the answer is c speculative motive now now there are three motives for people demand for money motive one I'll call transactionary. We have precautionary. We have speculative. This is the why everybody owes money. This one is for day-to-day -day transaction. You want to you want to um, board bike. You want to um, buy something day-to-day. -day. Precautionary is for unforeseen. Events, you know, all for some contingencies. The expectative is for a future yield. A future yield. One year, one year. So, this one is for investment. So, the answer is speculative, which is option C. Question 20. A system where the value of each and every goods is expressed in the terms of the other goods is referred to as open economy, socialist economy, capitalist economy. Butter system, price system. The other is uh, butter system, which is called trade butter, which is the exchange of goods for goods or um, service for service. Option D.